I'm making a museum management game in my own engine, reminiscent of tycoon and sim games that I played growing up. Giving the player their very own museum to manage, and allowing them to help other struggling museums throughout the world. Already the support for this game has been fantastic. Comments on the first devlog were really nice, and so many of you suggested amazing ideas for the game. I can't wait to bring those ideas to life once I've done the museum builder demo. But before all that, I need to get the basics sorted and make some tweaks to my game engine. Over the last few years, there's been a number of improvements I've wanted to do, but haven't had the chance. Now I've got the chance to not only make those changes, but to improve the overall quality of the engine by rewriting it. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first engine edition for my museum management devlogs. As we begin today's devlog, I'm in the process of rewriting my game engine. I can't wait to show it off, however it's in very early stages right now. So instead let's take a look at the current engine, take a look at the features it has and discuss why I want to rewrite it. When I started the engine back in 2019, many decisions that seemed small at the time have had a huge impact on every game I've made. That's resulted in weird code smells, such as every single game object requiring two constructors to use. The engine is also very unintuitive. Aside from the level editor, which is a nightmare in itself, there's no UI, it's all configured with code. That means every sprite, every collider, every particle, and every bit of UI has to be designed manually without seeing what it looks like. I want to solve these issues, not only for me, but for other game developers, as I'd love to one day be able to give someone the engine and see what they can make with it. Despite the rewrite, I don't feel like I'm completely starting from scratch. Many of the features in the engine are great and I want to keep, although many of them could do with some improvements. Let's take a look at each of the features in the engine and discuss my plans for each one. Starting with the first feature I added to the engine, animated sprites. These are crucial to almost every 2D game and I've used them in all of my games. They've worked really well, although they are a pain to set up. I'd love to create a tool, possibly integrated into the level editor to help set up sprite sheets and animations. Next, Collision. Collision was an early engine feature. I originally started with a simple system that checked each shape against each other. During the development of Project Tarum, I replaced that with a quadtree system to improve performance. I absolutely love the quadtree approach and I plan on keeping it. The main limitation of the system right now is the shapes that you can use. You can only use points, circles and squares and you can't even rotate them. To allow for more shapes and rotation, I plan on implementing the separating axis theorem which I read about a while ago. Next, input. This was another early engine feature. Input uses an event based system where events are fired based on what input is detected. I really like this approach and want to expand it to include custom bindings and a greater set of input devices such as controllers. These three features have been the backbone of every single game I've made in the engine. Sound has also played a part, however as we'll see in a short while, I haven't really done much to support sound in the engine. Moving on to some more interesting features. First, particle systems. These seem to be all the range in game dev these days, for a good reason. They can look fantastic. I really don't think the fires in Project Torum would have been any good if they didn't have a particle system. However, like sprites, they are a pain to set up. I'd love to have some kind of tool to tinker with the particle systems before I add them to games. Next, the level editor. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, it's a nightmare to use. This is because it was made in the early stages of Project Torum and hasn't really been updated since. I'd love to update it to be its own standalone program, support auto tiling, UI design, and the smaller tools that I mentioned earlier like the particle and sprite editors. Luckily the museum builder demo I'm working towards is essentially a level editor, so I can naturally head towards these goals. The last few features I want to mention are either incomplete or don't go far beyond the basics that Monogame provides. For example, the sound system is essentially Monogame sound with volume channels. I definitely want to improve this as layering sounds was an issue in Project Arum, however I don't really know how to approach this. If you've got any suggestions on how to improve that, then please let me know in the comments below. Pathfinding is another limited part of the engine. I originally planned to properly implement this in Project Torum, however I didn't have time, so I just have a simple agent that can move to a point and a longer path. Unfortunately that means all of the paths in that game are manually created. To automate the process I want to implement the A star algorithm, which I hope to use for guest AI in my museum game. Finally, physics. I have a few bits of code that implement physics. Really, this is just basic platform logic, and it's held together with string and a hope. If I rely on it too much, it will break. But luckily, it's not a priority right now, as it's not necessary for my museum game. 
As I continue the rewrite, I'm constantly looking for new features and improvements I can do to the engine. Nothing is done yet, but I'm dead set on trying automated testing, creating a game launcher to check for updates, and seeing if I can get Mac compatible builds. This is all very exciting. Follow my Twitter at Skeffles to see every little update I do, as I'm now participating in the 100 Days of Game Dev Challenge. And of course, I'll always be posting bigger updates here on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to get notified when I release new devlogs. My next devlog will be a deep dive into the core changes I'm making for the engine. Then it should be clear sailing onto the Museum Builder demo, which is the first big goal for the game. I hope you've enjoyed this devlog. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.